Ever wonder why dragons breathe fire in stories from China to Europe, or why dreams of flying echo from your own bedroom to the tales of ancient civilizations? Welcome to a journey into the depths of our collective psyche. I'm your guide into the labyrinth of symbols and archetypes that unite us in the most unexpected ways. Our navigator? The brilliant mind of Carl Jung, a man who dared to dive deep beneath the surface of the conscious mind into the murky, mysterious world of the collective unconscious. Prepare to explore corners of your mind you never knew existed, to decipher symbols that have shaped human behavior for centuries, and to discover connections that traverse geography, culture, and time. But beware, once you step into Jung's world, you may start seeing it in your dreams, in the stories you read, and who knows, maybe even in the very fabric of your own life. Are you ready? Buckle up, it's going to be a mind-bending ride. And so, our journey into the depths of the human psyche begins with a young Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist, striding boldly onto the stage of psychology. Now imagine Freud, the big-name superstar of the psychology world at the time, eyeing this young upstart. It's like a heavyweight boxing match, the master versus the apprentice. But instead of duking it out with fists, they sparred with ideas, theories, and interpretations of the human mind. Jung wasn't one to shy away from a good intellectual tussle, especially not when it came to his fascination with culture, myth, and symbolism. Freud might have argued that it's all about our childhood, our parents, and well, some other stuff we won't get into here, but Jung had a different idea. He believed that to understand the human mind, we have to delve deeper, way deeper, into the realms of mythology, folklore, and the symbols that pervade our dreams. It's as if each of us is a book, and sure, our personal story is in there, our joys, our heartbreaks, our favorite pizza toppings. But Jung suggested that beneath our personal story, there's a whole library of human experience. A vast collection of tales, symbols, and characters shared by us all, influencing us in ways we may not even realize. Jung called this the collective unconscious. Now, is it possible that we're not just shaped by our personal experiences, but also by this shared pool of symbols and stories? That's the question Jung posed to the world. And fair warning, it's not an easy one to answer. So, hold on to your seats. It's time to plunge deeper into this mystery, to unravel the concept of the collective unconscious. So, we've dipped our toes into the ocean of the collective unconscious, but it's time to dive a little deeper, to explore its mysterious depths. Picture it like the Mariana Trench of the mind, teeming with life and mystery. Only instead of weird and wonderful sea creatures, it's filled with symbols and archetypes, these strange, familiar figures that have been with us since time immemorial. Now, these archetypes are not your everyday symbols. They aren't logos on a cereal box or emojis in a text message. They're more like the DNA of our psychological world, the building blocks that make up our shared unconscious experience. They're themes and characters that resonate with us on a deep level, no matter our culture or our individual experiences. The hero, the mother, the trickster, the wise old man, these are all examples of archetypes that Jung believed exist within our collective unconscious. Think of the archetype as a well-worn path through a forest. Over centuries, so many have walked this path that it's become indelibly marked on the landscape, an indelible part of our shared heritage. We might not consciously recognize these paths, these archetypes, but they're there, subtly influencing the direction of our thoughts and our actions. Now, isn't it a bit wild to think that our minds might be guided by these ancient symbols, as if there's a psychological compass inside each of us, pointing us towards the same basic human experiences? It's like having a bunch of wise old ancestors whispering in our ears, sharing their wisdom through our dreams and our imaginations. But what about our individuality, our personal experiences? How do they fit into this picture? Well, that's where things get interesting. So stick around, because next, we'll be diving into the interplay between these universal symbols and our own unique, personal unconscious. Alright, here we are, standing at the entrance of this grand gallery of archetypes. It's a bit like a bustling party, isn't it? There's the mother archetype in one corner, embodying nurturing and warmth. 
Across the room, there's the shadow, that dark figure that represents the aspects of ourselves we'd rather not face. And look, over there, that's the anima and animus, symbolizing the feminine and masculine energies within us all. Center stage, we find the self, the wholeness and integration of who we are. Let's take a moment to focus on our dear friend, the shadow. You might notice it's not the life of the party, lurking in the corners, a bit mysterious, a bit misunderstood. But don't worry, it's not going to bite. It's just made up of the parts of ourselves we'd rather not admit to, the parts we've pushed away or ignored. Think of it as the basement of your personality, full of stuff you'd rather not deal with but still has a way of affecting you. Now, here's a bit of a curveball for you. If we can face our shadow, get to know it a little, we might just find it's not as scary as we thought. In fact, it might just be the key to personal growth. Controversial? Perhaps. But worth considering. And these archetypes, they aren't just hanging out in our individual psyches. They're popping up in our dreams, in our myths, in our movies. Ever noticed how many stories feature a wise old man or woman guiding the hero? That's the archetype of the wise old man or woman at work. Or how about those tales of transformation where the main character faces their fears and comes out stronger? Yep, you guessed it. That's the shadow archetype in action. But why are these archetypes so pervasive? Why do they keep showing up, time and time again, across cultures, across time? Are they a universal language, a code we're all programmed to understand? Well, strap in, because next we're going to dive into how this all plays out in our everyday lives. Buckle up, it's going to be quite the journey. And now we're going to pull back the curtains, revealing the grand theater of everyday life. Yes, you heard it right, we're stepping out of the abstract realm and landing smack dab in the middle of the real world. Think about the last time you felt an inexplicable bond with a stranger. You meet someone for the first time, and it's as if you've known them forever. You're speaking the same language, understanding each other's jokes, and sharing the same perspectives. That's the anima or animus at work, connecting you at a level beyond the conscious mind. It's a bit like finding your favorite song on a random playlist, isn't it? Or let's talk about those times when we're our own worst enemies. We make a decision, fully knowing it's the wrong one. It's like watching a horror movie, and we're yelling at the screen, don't go into the basement. But we go into the basement anyway. That's our shadow archetype, getting the better of us. It's a bit like a mischievous pet, causing chaos when we're not looking. And now for a plot twist. Let's play with the idea that society, as a whole, also has a shadow. Think about the trends we see sweeping across cultures, the sudden shifts in societal norms, the collective movements that seem to spring from nowhere. Could it be that our collective unconscious is steering the ship of societal trends? Of course, some might argue it's all coincidence, that we're reading too much into things. But isn't it more interesting to consider the alternative? That we're all connected at a deeper level, influencing and being influenced by these universal patterns of the collective unconscious. As we continue to peel back the layers of this fascinating concept, we're going to explore how we can use this understanding as a compass to navigate life. Are you ready to set sail on this journey into the depths of the unconscious mind? And here we are, on the cusp of uncharted territories, armed with a new compass, pointing us towards the deep-seated truths of our collective unconscious. Isn't it intriguing? It's like being handed a map to a treasure buried deep within our psyches, waiting to be discovered. Imagine you're a sailor, braving the stormy seas of interpersonal conflicts. Now, instead of blaming the storm, what if you could read the signs, the patterns, the archetypes at play? Recognizing that the mother or shadow archetype is steering the other person's actions could turn stormy seas into calm waters. It's like deciphering the secret language of relationships. But let's raise the stakes a bit. What if this compass could also lead us towards a more profound understanding of society? of cultural dynamics. It's like suddenly seeing the matrix. We start spotting patterns, understanding the cultural narratives that hold us together, or sometimes, drive us apart. Now, here's a thought. 
Could it be that our fixation with superhero movies is a manifestation of our collective yearning for the hero archetype? Or the popularity of apocalyptic narratives a reflection of our collective anxiety about the future? It's an interesting hypothesis, isn't it? But let's not forget about the elephant in the room, personal growth. Imagine the potential of harnessing the power of the collective unconscious, of integrating our personal shadow, of realizing ourself. It's like stepping into a new version of ourselves, more in tune with our inner world, ready to face any challenge. But wait a minute, isn't all this a bit too mystical, a bit too esoteric? Perhaps. But isn't it worth suspending our skepticism for a moment and exploring these ideas with an open mind? After all, the greatest treasures are often found in the most unexpected places. So, let's dive deeper into this ocean of collective unconscious, exploring the rich tapestry of archetypes, decoding the language of our dreams, and unearthing the treasures hidden within our psyche. I see we're all on board and ready to sail into the depths of our collective unconscious. We've been talking about using the compass of the collective unconscious, but how do we actually do that in our everyday life? Let's dig a bit deeper. Picture yourself walking in a labyrinth, a complex maze of your own emotions and behaviors. You've been there before, right? We all have. Now, this labyrinth doesn't have a definitive map. But what if I told you that our collective unconscious is like the North Star in this labyrinth? Let's say you've been having the same dream over and over again a dream of being chased by a wild animal. Instead of dismissing it as just a nightmare, you could dive deeper into the collective unconscious and realize that the wild animal might represent the shadow archetype. It might symbolize the parts of you that you've repressed or ignored. It's like your own subconscious telling you to face your fears and confront your shadow. Or let's consider relationships. Ever wondered why we get drawn to certain types of people? It might be the anima or animus archetype at play, representing our inner masculine or feminine self. Understanding this could help us navigate our relationships more effectively. It's like having a secret decoder ring for the complex language of human relationships. Now here's a thought that might ruffle some feathers. What if our political affiliations are influenced by our collective unconscious? Could the hero archetype explain our tendency to rally behind charismatic leaders, expecting them to solve all our problems? It's a controversial thought but one worth pondering over. Our journey through life, with all its trials and tribulations, can be viewed as a hero's journey, an adventure filled with archetypal encounters and challenges. And the collective unconscious, with its rich reservoir of archetypes, can serve as our guide, our compass. So, why not embark on this journey of self-discovery, of decoding the language of our dreams, of understanding the patterns in our behaviors and relationships? Remember, the compass is in your hands. The question is are you ready to navigate your labyrinth? The labyrinth of life. A beautiful puzzle, isn't it? As we traverse through its twisty turns, there's always a new surprise waiting. Now, let's delve deeper into this journey, armed with our compass of the collective unconscious. Imagine watching a movie that resonates deeply with you. You feel a tug at your heartstrings but you can't quite put your finger on why it strikes a chord. This could be the self-archetype at work, connecting you to a universal human experience portrayed in the movie. It's as though our collective unconscious is a grand theater, and we're all part of the audience, captivated by the same story. Similarly, have you ever felt an inexplicable fear or phobia? Spiders, heights, or maybe the dark? This might be the collective unconscious stirring up inherited fears from our ancestors. Kind of like an old, dusty box in the attic of our minds, filled with fears passed down through generations. Now, let's have some fun. Ever experienced a deja vu or a synchronicity? It's as if the universe is playing its own version of connect the dots, linking seemingly unrelated events in a meaningful way. Could it be the collective unconscious orchestrating this cosmic dance? Speaking of dances, let's waltz into something a tad controversial. Consider the global popularity of certain music genres, like pop or rock. Is it just catchy tunes, 
Or could the trickster archetype be pulling the strings, making us dance to its rhythm? A bit provocative, yes, but it does make one wonder. The collective unconscious is an invisible thread that weaves through the fabric of our lives, linking us to our ancestors, guiding our personal growth, and shaping societal trends. Whether we're navigating the labyrinth of our dreams or the maze of our relationships, it's always there, offering signposts and symbols. Remember, the collective unconscious isn't just a concept, it's a lived experience. It's like a silent whisper in our ear, a nudge in the ribs, or a hearty laugh at a shared joke. It's part of our everyday life, woven into our very being. Isn't life a bit like navigating a vast, uncharted sea? Our collective unconscious serves as a subtle undercurrent, guiding our voyage through both calm and stormy waters. Let's set sail on this journey, shall we? Consider the moment when you meet someone for the first time, and there's an instant connection like a pair of old souls recognizing each other. It's as if the anima or animus archetypes are at play, bridging the gap between conscious and unconscious realms. Now, how about the fascination with superhero movies and epic tales of good versus evil? Isn't it a bit like the hero and shadow archetypes battling it out on a universal stage? It's as if our collective unconscious is the screenplay writer, penning a story that resonates with audiences worldwide. Venturing into the humorous side of things, have you ever slipped on a banana peel or spilled coffee on your shirt, only to burst into laughter? Could it be the trickster archetype making a cameo appearance, reminding us not to take life too seriously? Now brace yourself for a slightly unorthodox thought. Could it be that our collective fascination with apocalyptic stories and dystopian fiction is an expression of the shadow archetype? A reflection of our collective fears and anxieties? A bit of a bitter pill to swallow, but it does provoke thought, doesn't it? What's fascinating is that these archetypal patterns aren't confined to our personal lives. They echo in the corridors of power, in the rise and fall of civilizations, and even in the world of business and technology. It's like a grand symphony composed by our collective unconscious, and we're all playing our part, consciously or unconsciously. So, as we sail through the sea of life, let's keep an ear out for the whispers of the collective unconscious a compass pointing us towards the stars. It's a journey of discovery, of personal growth, and of understanding the rhythm of our shared human story. Before we part ways today, let's dwell for a moment on a profound quote from Carl Jung himself, one that beautifully encapsulates our journey today. He once said, Who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakes. It's a gentle reminder for all of us to turn our gaze inward to understand the shared dreams and aspirations that unite us as a species. Because within us lie not only the echoes of our past but also the seeds of our future. It's been a pleasure sharing this journey into the depths of the collective unconscious with you today. Your companionship makes this exploration all the more meaningful and enriching. Up until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Remember, every moment is an opportunity for discovery.